Welcome to my first Wilmer AI tutorial video. I know I've owed you all this for a while. I've been saying for a long time I'd get out here and make this thing. I do apologize. Uh, my hope is that by the end of this video, you have a better understanding not only of what Wilmer is, but also how to set the thing up and maybe some of the use cases that you might use it for. Wilmer AI is a prompt router. If we scroll down here, you can see a little flow chart that I made for a simple workflow. Uh, your prompt comes in from a front end. It can be Silly Tavern. It could be Open Web UI. It could be a Python script that you have. It could be a curl command. Um, Wilmer exposes OpenAI compatible chat and text completion endpoints, and it exposes OLAMA compatible generate and API chat endpoints. So as long as your application can connect to one of those two, either OpenAI or OLAMA, it should in theory be able to connect to Wilmer. Once Wilmer has your prompt, then the next thing it would do is categorize it. Now, the categories are completely customizable. You can set them to anything you want. Here, I just chose reasoning, coding, and conversational for kind of a generic example. You had got a JSON file in there. You can put as many as you want, and you give little descriptions of them. Once it's determined what category it is, it's going to send it off to a workflow that you specify for that category, which I have here saying, you know, reasoning would go to Llama 370B, coding would go to OpenAI, ChatGPT. There's not actually a limit to how many LLMs are in one workflow, so you're not limited to only one per workflow. Uh, if you wanted to, you could have, say, the coding one go to Llama 3.370B, then it could go over to uh, the Quinn 2.5 32B coder, then you could have it go to ChatGPT, DeepSeek, on and on and on. Uh, so just keep in mind that you can have a single workflow hit many LLMs from many different sources. In the vein of custom categories, to show a slightly more extreme example, um, I don't know if you all happen to remember, right before I released Wilmer, I had made a little post saying that I had realized I could do something with the program I didn't really expect. I had noticed during my testing that Silly Tavern, when you're in a group chat, if you're using a text completion endpoint, will make the last message in the collection the name of the next persona that's supposed to go with a little colon after it. This gave an almost guaranteed way to determine what next character should go during the prompt routing. So here, as a user, it looked like just a regular group chat, but in actuality, each persona was be being powered by a different LLM, a different workflow. If we look back to this little uh, flowchart here, you can see that it comes in from Silly Tavern. Next, we're going to look at the categories. We're going to determine which one it thinks goes next, and we kick it off to the appropriate workflow. Workflows are pretty much exactly what you'd expect. Uh, when you're looking at a workflow, workflows have individual nodes where each node is a specific action that you want to take. Now, an action in its simplest form could be uh, reaching out and prompting an LLM. So you'd have a system prompt, you'd have a regular prompt, you could choose what sampler settings to use your presets, and then you can choose what endpoint you want as well. So to give an example of an extremely simple, simple coding workflow, uh, the first one would ask uh, whatever your first LLM is, um, please respond to the user, here's the conversation. It would respond as normal. Then the next node would go in and maybe a completely different LLM would say, okay, you're a code reviewer, please look over this response, make sure everything looks good, please clean it up, et cetera, et cetera. And then finally send it to a third model, which is the responder, which would take whatever the critiques were, whatever the, the fixes it might've applied and kick that off back to the user. So from the user's perspective, it looks like a zero shot. You sent a message, waited maybe a little bit longer than what you normally would have, but the response that you get back is of a higher quality because rather than being a zero shot, it's actually three different steps or maybe even three different LLMs all taking a swing at completing this task. Thinking about a conversation workflow, it would work pretty much the same way. Uh, this readme is about a year old, and so this flowchart 
uh, is a little different than what I do today. So I'll kind of walk you through what I'd probably do today where we'd still grab that memory file, but then the next thing that we would do is maybe kick it off to a reasoning model like QWQ32B or DeepSeek's R1 Distill 32B and have it think through the response, have it look at all the context, have it look at the, the memories, and once it's come up with a really good response, which would probably take a ton of tokens, uh, then pass that on to another LLM that maybe we like the, the sound of it more, we like the tone better. Uh, an example might be Mistral Small 3, where there was a lot more human-generated text in the training, so it's not as bad at uh, GPT-isms as some of the other models might be. We have it take all of those thoughts and summarize them so that we get a nice clean response and we don't have to see all those extra tokens. One other type of workflow that I wanted to call out, um, in particular a specific node, is this Python caller workflow. Uh, the reason I gave this one a special little flowchart on here was because this node will give you the opportunity to extend Wilmer to do just about anything that you want. Um, this particular node will allow you to call Python scripts that as long as they expose a method called invoke that takes an args and a kargs and returns back a string, you can do anything else that you want in that script. You don't have to do anything with the arguments that you pass in, and you could just return an empty string if you wanted to, but as long as you expose a method that has that signature, sky's the limit. I had realized early on that I probably would never be able to put out all the nodes that everyone would want, and so this was kind of a, a cheat to get aware to get around it so that let's say somebody comes in and they want to use Wilmer to read the news and have the news parsed sent to an LLM have the LLM respond to it that's not really a crazy thing to ask of a workflow app um, I don't currently have a node that will go out there and pull the, the news for you but you could add one if you happen to know of a library to do that then you could just take a Python script, have it go grab all of that, summarize that into a string, the, the output, and kick that out of the script, send that to an LLM and another node to summarize, and then respond to you. So I wanted to call that one out there because if there's anything you want to do, you've loaded up Wilmer and you're feeling a little disappointed at the, the number of available nodes, this should help a little bit. Uh, I would say that Wilmer in its current state as of this video I would barely consider it to be an alpha release. I think that I'm only just barely getting comfortable with the idea that other people are getting into this app to start to use it. There's still a lot more I wanna add in, so hopefully this will hold some of you over. If you get in here and you wanna do some complex things that it's maybe not ready to do yet with the node selection that it has. One thing I do want to call out about Wilmer in general before we move on to, to the setup, sort of a little bit of a combination of an explanation and a bit of a warning and disclaimer. So Wilmer being a workflow app is going to generate a lot of tokens. If you're coming here using one of the proprietary AI APIs like OpenAI's API, Mistral's, something like that, um, where every single token can cost you money, then connecting it to a workflow app, you just need to be prepared that similar to an agent, there's gonna be a lot of prompts going on between each message that you send and also some redundancy that could occur. Uh, when I first started creating Wilmer, the entire purpose behind it was the realization that these local models that we have, these little general purpose models, as a generalist going against the proprietary models, they lost every time. If you were to look at, say, Quinn 2.572b, and you were to compare that against ChatGPT's 4.0, almost every single time, uh, the 72b will lose. Now, of course, DeepSeek 671b has kind of changed the game a little bit. I can't actually run it, though. So for the things that I can run, it's still basically that way. Now, with that said, at least at the time I started Wilmer, and still a little bit today, our fine tunes were able to keep up in specific domains a lot better than you would expect. If you consider our current Quinn 2.5 32B coder, if you're looking at the IDER leaderboards, 
yes, it's still being left behind by like DeepSeek and by ChatGPT's O1, but it is still on that leaderboard with them. And having that as a local model, that's really helpful. So if you are limited, say, to, to 32B is the largest model that you can run, then rather than trying to rely on just Quinn 2.5 uh, 32B instruct because you want a generalist model, instead you could have that instruct handle other things like the conversation and the reasoning, but then you could send coding specifically to the, the 2.5 32B coder uh, so that even though it looks like you're using one model, you're getting a lot higher quality. It, it's no longer relying on us having generalists. So all of that is to say, Wilmer is really designed specifically for local models. That, that's what I was going for. There's no limitation to using it with proprietary AI. And honestly, if you come in here and you were to attach this to ChatGPT 4.0 and to Claude and to Gemini and all those, you'll probably get a much higher quality response than anything that I get using my local models. But also keep in mind that if you go attaching those and you run one of the really long workflows, then you may see that cost ticker just going straight out of the roof. And I didn't want that to catch you by surprise if maybe you aren't used to workflows or you're still kind of new to this. I wanted you to get a, a heads up. You really want to look at the workflow you're about to run and just be prepared. It will cost more to use a, a workflow app in general with those proprietary APIs.